I am here today with my ter always terrible professor, Alex. Why are you hijacking my show? This is my show. My show now. Don't Uno reverse card me. Receive the Uno reverse. Bad. Welcome to Marvel Cinematic University. I'm your host and professor, Alex. And with me, as always, is a very big disappointment of a student, Jacob. Hello, Jacob. I already introduced us, but, you know... If you want to double dip, that's fine. I have the power of editing. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> oh, well, this is Marvel Cinematic University, where each and every week I teach Jake something about the Marvel Cinematic Universe that he probably didn't know and still won't remember after this whole thing. Yeah, probably not. What are we talking about today, Professor? This week, we're talking about Ant-Man. Oh, did you know that movie? was directed by Peyton Harris? A, do you have, like, an index card of cheats, and B, did you write down the wrong name? <laughs> it's something Peyton or Peyton something. It's Peyton Reed. I don't know where you got Peyton Harris from. I knew it was a semi-generic last name. I guess Harris is semi-genetic. You want to be like Genetic? That. <laughs> Generic, you mean? <laughs> Listen, who's I've been teaching forget the class here? I don't know. Google. Now, really, before we get rolling here, I have one ask of you. I don't know if I can oblige by that, but what is it? It's, it's pretty simple. Okay. Uh, could you potentially flip the mouthpiece of your headphone up? You could do that as well. Does that, that hide it? Does that hide it nice for you? I this is really the best that it does. It's not it's not really an intuitive thing. Maybe it's looks been like that and I haven't been able to see it because I can't see it now, so Okay, well anyway. Um let me tell you some things about Ant Man. I think that's how this podcast goes, right? I tell you things. I think you tell me things, then I tell you some things, you chime in, you give me a bad grade for something I did correctly. And then oh, you're making me much bigger. Not supposed to point out when I change things. <laughs> <laughs> we hide that in editing. Um, okay, yeah, so you stopped talking abruptly. So let me go ahead and tell you the budget. <laughs> <laughs> so Peyton redirected it. Now, uh, I think you, I, I don't know what the budget was, or maybe this is the budget, but the Box office did like five hundred and sixty million, I think. It was five hundred and nineteen point three million. You fool! <laughs> was that the budget or the the box office? The box office, okay. The budget was one hundred and thirty million, and I don't like you sitting here taking these notes away from me. This is my <laughs> job. <laughs> you tell the story; I give you all the fun facts. Uh, yeah. So it was a box office of five hundred nineteen point three million. Uh, after a budget of 130 million, it was, it was. You probably don't know this, but it was directed by Peyton Reed. Didn't know that. Okay, cool. I'm glad you said that. Now I can cut all the rest of the stuff out. Um, I knew it. This film stars Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, and Judy Greer. Michael Pena is probably one of my favorite actors of all time, and probably one of the best parts of this movie. Uh, spoiler alert, but the biggest disappointment of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is that he's not in it. Yeah. See in like, any of the Ant-Man movies or movies he appears in? He's in Ant-Man and the Wasp. You said he just doesn't, you just said he doesn't appear in that. Are you gaslighting me? No, I said he doesn't appear in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Oh, <laughs> That's that's the third film. The second film is Ant-Man and the Wasp, and the third film is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Oh, sorry. Sorry I got that confused. So I think you're gaslighting me. <laughs> it was a fictitious gaslighting. Um, this movie takes place a few months after Ultron and a few months before Civil War. Thus the uh the final end credit scene. Oh yeah, and it ranks number 42 on Marvel's all-time earnings. So last week you asked me, out of all the Marvel films, which one, like, where did Ultron rank in, um, 
in box office drawings. And that was six for Ultron, and I figured I would add that fact into all these from now on. Oh, you're like welcome. And 42 is where Ant-Man falls. Now, this not, doesn't only include the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This includes all Marvel films. I couldn't find one that was just this MCU. Oh, okay. But gotcha. don't worry, because we are going to be talking about most Marvel films at some point, so... Yeah, we'll, we'll get to most of them. Oh, hell yeah, we will. <laughs> So, have we gone over, like, any of the top three yet? Oh, uh, I didn't write the whole list down, if I'm being honest with you. I can pull it up what? pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, give it a... Type it into Google, and let's see what we can see. I actually bookmarked it. Oh, helpful. Uh, we, the highest we've seen is number five, or actually, yeah, number five was The Avengers. Okay, so we got some good movies coming up here. Uh, yeah, we haven't seen any in the top four, and we've only seen, we've only seen three in the top ten. Well, uh, you know, we, the highest we've seen is the top five, I would assume we haven't seen any in the top four. I'm really glad at how you're good at math, just like you're going to be so good at telling us about Ant-Man. Oh, boy. Ants. So I believe in you. Oh, I don't believe in me. Come on, man. Just think just think like it's like it's the year nineteen eighty nine. It's uh when Dr. Pym is creating the Pym technology to shrink things. Okay. So the um. film opens up. <laughs> Big date. I think it's nineteen eighty nine. I'm pretty sure it's nineteen eighty nine. Um if it's not, I've cut this part out. And it pans over to the Triskelion. Then you see Dr. Mr. Pym walking in and he walks over to a Howard Stark, a Peggy Carter and a and a man whose name escapes me. But he is like some kind of Hydra agent. And the Pym's like, you don't get to have the Pym particle. And Howard Stark's like, but bro, we we would be useful with that Pym par- particle. And he's like, my wife died because of this pin particle and you stupid shield and then punches the Hydra guy in the face. I do remember that. I think the 1989 part threw me off um, because I 100% missed the 1989 portion of it. Oh, you didn't happen to notice that Michael Douglas looked about 30 years younger and uh, Peggy Carter was alive and looked uh, like 60 something. Sure, I could see how you would make that assumption. Um, let me explain myself. I was doing dishes when I first started watching this movie. It always takes you 15 minutes to get into a movie, I hear. First 15 is really uh, a gray area for me, as far as timeline goes. Anyway, so then uh, I, I think uh, the Marvel logo plays, um, and it's like the bum ba da bum bum something like that and yeah. anyway so then it pans to san francisco there's a prison uh that is uh you know looks like he's getting into a fight here but it's really just a nice going away party with punches yeah he's just getting he just gets to make a punch and then gets hit in the face there was no punch bowl there it was a different kind of punch it was a one two punch the old one two punch. And then uh he gets so he gets out of prison and does he go back or he gets picked up by like Michael Pena. They're driving, he's like, Oh, my girl left me, my dad died, but I got the van. Yeah, he uh he hasn't had a good go of it since he got out of jail. Not positive though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He's a real uh, glass half full kind of guy. The infamous fan that we'll see in a lot of movies. And so he goes and he's like, I got to get a job. And so he gets a, the best paying job uh, at Baskin Robbins. Yeah. And ba- Baskin and Robbins, what? Ice cream. No. Baskin Robbins knows everything. Baskin yeah. Robbins finds out. Oh, well, yeah, I was gonna, I was going to get to that part. But Baskin Robbins always finds out. Um, but you know, I think it's important to mention that since he is in the customer service industry there, he, he does have customers asking for like a burger yeah. or pizza at a ice cream parlor. 
naturally. Now this kid, this kid just seemed like he was a little prankster. Um, but in my head canon, he's an Alabaman. He's at least fifty. He looks pretty good for a fifty year old, but yeah, certainly from from Alabama. Probably, he's from the Bammy of Ala. Um, um, but he's like, let me get some wieners. <laughs> yeah, let me get some wieners, guys. He's like, he's like, ask me about my wiener. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, Baskin Robbins does find out that he has a checkered past. And his manager is pretty pumped that he has a checkered past, but he's like, still got to let you go. But I'll tell you what, I'll look the other way if you take (laughs) a smoothie on the road. Yeah, he's he's just like, sorry, um, but I'm a big fan. (laughs) I'm a big fan. And then he goes back and Michael Payne is like, Oh, well, Baskin Robbins finds out everything. You know that, bro. <laughs> Apparently, it's a well known thing. So, Baskin Robbins thing. always finds out. Always finds out. And Baskin Robbins confirmed MCU for the first time. It's true. And <laughs> where am I work? Scott Lang, employee of Baskin Robbins. <laughs> employee of the month. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I think he goes to. Uh, or well, he goes to talk to like uh, Michael Payne. He's like, "Hey, I got this job for you." He's like, "No, nah, I don't want to go back to the clink." Okay, kind of like whatever, but like think about it maybe. And then he goes to his daughter's birthday party, mm-hmm. brings her a terrifying Judy Hops, who's voiced by the SpongeBob voice actor Tom Kenny. Is he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. But they're like, "Hey, you, you know, I know you want to see your daughter and like get like some kind of custody here." But you got to get a job first. He's like, I can't get a job. Get some money. He just wants a job. He just wants a job. So he goes back and he's like, you know what? I'm going to do this job. But it's got to be foolproof. And you know where he has to break into? Where? Dr. Pym's house. What? Oh, I think we forgot the whole like part two where um, Hank Pym goes to the to his Pym Industries. Oh, yeah, and uh, Dalton, Dylan Cross, something Cross. Da- Darren Cross. Darren Cross. I knew it was a D. Real dick bag Cross. Yeah, he's a, he's a swell guy. Listen, he's an Avenger. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. And he's uh, kind of like ex-protege of Pym, if you will. I think they're like family. Uh, but yes. Yeah, they're like that. There's a lot of I'm I'm throwing in a lot of references for people who saw uh, Ant Man and the Lost Quantumania. Well, we haven't watched that yet. We don't know anything about that movie. You don't know anything. Mind- I'm the teacher. I had to go through college minus for this the, stuff. Yeah, minus the 47 TikToks you posted this week on it. But I don't know what you're talking about. Um. So yeah, they have a little scuffle. He's like, you know, this is dangerous technology. This isn't something you want to sell. You know, and then he goes. I'm skipping some parts here, but you know. He kind of goes on his merry way, starts turning lambs into sludge. Oh, yeah. He makes a little <laughs> booger. Uh, he <laughs> also turns that guy into a booger, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lamb boogies. And he picks it up with a tissue and is like, you got to crack a few eggs. You got to crack a few eggs to make a few omelets. Meanwhile, <laughs> Scott is, uh, you know, he's accepting this plan. Mm hmm to break into Pim's house and he steals, you know, he gets into the vault by doing some uh, tinkering with it and freezing and throwing like a raft or something in there. Oh, raft. Yeah. It was like raft esque raft esque. Okay. Yeah. You, you could totally float on it if you needed to. Okay. Okay. Um, but I bet it's like a door that's only big enough for one person. It's a pretty sizable door, I yeah, think. Yeah, but um, I think only one person would be able to fit on there. If anyone else tries to get on, I'm going to tell them it's big enough for one person and they have to drown to death. Like the Titanic. Yeah, it took you long enough to get that reference. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, that raft was big enough for two people, but that's a story for a different day. Not yeah, part of the MCU. That's for uh, Titanic Cinematic University. Uh, fun fact that's actually Peyton Reed's favorite movie which is why he put that raft in this movie it's a little I don't I don't a little, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be I, telling lies you're you'll confuse the class so he gets into the safe and he's like hey there ain't shit in here 
No, and he says there's a motorcycle suit. Yeah, he's like, there's not anything in here but except a motorcycle suit. But he takes it anyway because that's what thieves do. He, he's yeah, he is a he's a burglar, not a thief. Yeah, it says he in the burgles. book he's an ex-con. He's a burger burglar. He's a ham burglar. He doesn't use weapons. He's a burglar, cat burglar, ant burglar. He is an ant burglar. So he gets the suit and then he puts it on. And does he shrink right away when he puts it on? Like he activates it and then they're like, here's your first challenge because, you know, they set him up to steal the suit. And then he shrinks down. He goes through the tube and then, uh, or no, he, he lands on the ground and then like Michael Pena almost steps on him. And then he goes through the floorboard and then he's partying with his downstairs neighbors who just so happen to have like a nightclub down there or something. Yeah, it, it's like so, a rave 24 seven down there. What do you expect? The house is probably a rental. Can't have all good neighbors. It's literally like they have a full on DJ and dance floor and everything. <laughs> but yeah, and then I think he fights a sewer rat at some point as well, right? Yeah, uh, he falls into the sewer or something and there's a rat and uh, he gets away from that rat. And then he gets arrested. Trying to return the suit, yeah. Then um, he's like, or uh, Dr. Pym was like, you know, comes in. He's like, I'm his lawyer. He's like, if you want to work for me, you know what to do. Like, hit the suit. Get out of here. If not, I'll know your answer. Kind of a situation. And then he has ants do a countdown for him. Yep. <laughs> and he decides to shrink. Makes a getaway. Um. He's wow. in a getaway car. Turns out he wouldn't go far. Sorry, <laughs> uh, the Taylor Swift hit. Yeah, yeah. Old T Swizzle is playing in the background, apparently. And, um, well, Dylan Cross is zapping lambs. Scott Lang is out on the lamb. Yeah, he's riding on Antony. He's riding on Antony. May he rest in peace. Number 247 that he names Anthony. His name is 247? Do you have any idea how many ants there are? I'm going to name this one Anthony. <laughs> and then he goes back to the house where he stole the motorcycle suit from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they kind of start to train him. And uh, what's her face? Hope is like, hey, these ants will bite the shit out of you. Yeah, not happy. She also, hates him. She does not like him. Uh, because that was supposed to be her job, she thinks. Well, yeah, she wanted to be the Ant-Man. Ant-Woman. You don't know. She wanted to be the Ant-Man. Anyway, yeah. so then she Ant-Mans now. Um, then he walks downstairs and is like, I just have one question. Who are you? What do you want? What is this? Why am I here? Yeah. And, you know, I think they have like a conversation where... He kind of explains, like, the world could potentially be ending here. If you don't help us, we need you to help us. And she's like, we don't need his help. But he decides to help anyway. Um, and then they start training him. He runs into a door a couple times trying to, you know, learn how to jump through a keyhole. Also, first, too, before all this, like, uh, Michael Douglas was explaining to Paul Rudd that uh, they couldn't call the Avengers because he spent his entire life not putting this into the hands of a Stark. Oh, I do recall him saying that. Yeah, he uh, and that's you know part of the first fifteen minutes when uh, he doesn't want to give the suit to Stark that I missed. Yeah, and he also he also says, uh, "All right, Paul Rudd's like for, I think step one should be we call the Avengers." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, the "They're oh god." And Michael Douglas is like, uh, they're probably too busy dropping rocks on the Earth or cities on the Earth. Yeah. <laughs> Throwback to Ultron. Mm -hmm. Which happened like three months ago. Actually, during the um, the scene where Ant-Man goes down to his neighbor's house, he also falls outside into a like, waiting room and goes across somebody's hand or somebody's magazine who, where it says, who's responsible for Sokovia? Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, setting up a uh, civil war. Subtle little details that uh, really make the movie. Hell yeah. <laughs> um. So and then, so while he's training, they have like step three, which is um, they have to go to this abandoned building. 
a Stark a, building. A Stark building. Um, and get something. Turns out, not abandoned. Turns out, Stark sold it to the <laughs> Avengers. <laughs> and uh, who does he run into? But uh, new Captain America. Bird Boy Falcon. He's not Captain America <laughs> yet. Uh, yeah. We'll get there. But he yeah. uh, runs into Anthony Mackie. Mm-hmm. And they have who's, a little tussle. Who's talking to Black Widow on this comms and is like, yo, don't tell Cap about all this. I didn't catch that. Was it Black Widow? I didn't catch that. Yeah, the director confirmed that it was Black Widow. Okay. Oh, because her, her voice wasn't actually in it, but... No, he was just like, somebody asked that like, panel, was like, who was Falcon talking to? And the director said Black Widow. Oh, makes sense. That's the why more you know. Um, but, you know, he kind of messes up Falcon's suit and he gets what he needs, um, which I believe was Pym Particles or no. No, he yeah, he needed a, a something. <laughs> he gets the something he's looking for. Yeah, um, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> which apparently is crucial to the mission here. It was something to stop the alarm, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, maybe something. An alarm stopper, uh ring camera, maybe. Um, but anyway, he, yeah, he gets that. Uh, and then he's also like, I need a crew. And Michael Douglas is like, absolutely not. There is no way we are hiring those idiots. <laughs> and then they hire those idiots. Uh, we, all, we also forgot Michael Pena's best part where he's like talking about the job of uh, Scott going to steal from Michael Douglas. And he's like, well, I heard it from my friend who heard it from my cousin who heard it from them that there was this mission going down. <laughs> I, just I, I want an entire an entire MCU recap with Michael Pena voicing over it. That would be electric. We should have him on the podcast. If you could get Michael Pena onto this podcast, you could be the professor. I'll I'll get I'll send him a tweet. Um. All right. So they start planning the heist, and it's gonna be like Pena is gonna distract this guy, and the other people are gonna be plumbers, and Ant Man needs to tell the ants to turn off the electricity. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Sorry, I got confused. You usually do. Yes, yeah, so it was confusing. Um, then, uh, well, so Michael Pena is like kind of staging as a security guard mm. and he puts the ring camera that they stole from the Avengers into the tray. Yeah. The ring camera. <laughs> yeah. It was ring camera esque. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely something. Yeah. <laughs> definitely something, um, in there, which does something. Not sure what. It's highly theorized that it's going to help them. It's highly theorized. But then uh, all the ants get in through the water pipes, which was why they needed the two plumbers. Mm. And this is kind of where the main heist of the movie takes place. Because they're bum, trying to steal... Bum, 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 Yeah, Mission Impossible Ant-Man. I, I don't think we've mentioned at this point they're trying to steal the yellow jacket suit. I don't think we mentioned that at all, yeah. They, yeah. Uh... They don't want the yellow jacket to have it. Yeah, because after melting about 74 lambs... They got a little uh, mad about it. He got it to work. And he now has a yellow jacket suit that works. Scary. And I also think it's like important to mention that Pim's wife died due to going subatomic. Oh yeah, we did learn that. Um, she, she had to shrink between the particles. Between the titanium. She didn't die in a in a plane crash. No. Like he and, told uh, Hope and everybody knew it was a lie this whole time. King of gaslighting. How dare he? How dare he? So after they get in, um the cops outside are like, hey, I recognize that van, and they're trying to disable the the security stuff, right? Mm -hmm. The security lasers. Yeah. Protecting the ant man or the the yellow jacket but he finally gets in and that's where old bad guy dylan darren darren cross cross i'm, I'm flipping to his page right now actually as we speak he's got a page uh, he has a page um 
Oh, I think it's funny. Anthony also has a page. And it's called, he's called the Small Steed. Wait, who is the Small Steed? Anthony. Oh, it's my boy, Anthony. My boy, Anthony. <laughs> he is, he's a small steed. I thought that was a fun fact right there. That is a fun fact. I was pretty fun. <laughs> I had a good time. Old bad guy Darren Cross um, kind of knows something's up. And he takes the the yellow jacket out of the thing and traps Scott into the the holding cell that he can't get out of. No, he's got to kill oh, it, no. man. And then they uh, shoot Hank Pym in the chest. As one does. As one does. And that's when he, uh, or before that, he breaks out and starts, you know, the fight. And that's when Hank Pym gets shot in the chest. They, you know, they strap C4 all within the wasp suit creating machine mm -hmm. uh, and I skipped ahead again but um, Darren Cross decides he's selling this stuff to sh uh, Hydra because they've changed listen listen one time at one point in history they were friends with Hitler now now they've, cha they've changed their way yeah they're they, uh, would, so let's not forget the fact that they took over an entire organization and have, we're going to have three helicarriers kill millions of people before uh, before they were stopped, um, before they committed any crimes. I They've changed. That was like two years ago. Like It was a year and a half ago. year and a half ago, right? Like, you can change in a year and a half. What about in two years when Hydra starts playing with snakes well, we'll and dragons? Have <laughs> we'll have to see what happens then, but... And portals and a demon who takes over a body. Highly theorized that, but yeah. So he's he's in the helicopter and he shoots Antony, and Antony he... dies. And uh, they're like, or uh, Hank's Hank Pym's like, you gotta leave me. Or no, he's like, no, no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Cut this. Left it all in. His daughter's like, we gotta get you out of here, and he's like, we're not dying today. See this tank. You mean the thing they cut to 900 times in the movie, obviously alluding to the fact that it's a real fucking tank the whole time. <laughs> now, here's where the science breaks, right? So, Ant-Man, when he shrinks, he keeps his same weight and, it, like, makes him stronger somehow. How the fuck is this man carrying a full-weighted tank? Well, I mean, did you see the way he punched Darren Cross? He's obviously yoked. Dude's been doing biceps nonstop. Uh, you know what? You're right. You're right. Michael no, Douglas. Michael lifted. Douglas just runs the circuit. <laughs> yeah. Why don't they just take the tank and start shooting shells at the building? Listen, it was his building. Yeah. I mean, it's highly theorized he has something to help him lift the tank, though. Yeah. It's not, though. Um, Some would say so he has the power of an ant who can lift way more than their own body weight. He's just got a secret ant up his sleeve holding onto it. It's like, like that. That can't feel good for him. No, no, not at all. And then meanwhile, <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp, they're duking it out in the helicopter, firing lasers and killing everyone inside it. They end up in a briefcase, uh, fall into a pool. As one does. At, luckily, the pool was there. And... The wasp gets out, terrifies a family. Um, it's the yellow jacket. Wasp yellow jacket. Like, I, I, they're similar-ish. Okay. Whatever you say. Very angry with that comment, for sure, but... Hope is the wasp. Hope is the wasp. Yes, you had Ant-Man and the wasp in my head this whole time. I I think you had Ant-Man and the wasp in your head this whole time. It's highly theorized. Um, so, yeah, so the yellow jacket uh, gets away, steals... Uh, what's his face? Scott Lang's daughter, and is like, I'm gonna kill well, her oh, first. He gets the old bug zap. Oh right, right. He does get bug zapped. <laughs> bug zapped, and Scott gets arrested. He's like, you gotta take me back there. And then they get the call across the radio that his daughter's basically been, or there's a situation going on at his house. Cut to the wasp being like, I need your dad. Yellow and jacket. Like, the yellow jacket. Maybe Hope Pym is the bad guy over, after all. Maybe. And that's when they fight on um, the tank engine. Mm-hmm. 
they make him bigger and he goes choo choo through the side of the building. Yeah, through the building and he uh he enlarges an ant that runs down the stairs at the cops and they're like, That's a messed up dog. It is a pretty messed up dog. <laughs> There's just a giant <laughs> ant running around San Francisco. Yeah, it becomes a pet at the end. Wait till we get to uh Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, does that play a special role? Maybe a little special. Okay, okay, I'm excited. Uh, so Ant Man phases through the particles, and uh, Wasp shrinks with the or wow, now you got me doing it. Yellow Jacket <laughs> shrinks into himself, and uh, Ant Man shrinks into the quantum realm. It's kind of weird that Darren Cross didn't go into the quantum realm if you think about it. Oh, wait, um. I was actually going to ask you about that because I was a little confused. You'll learn later on. Oh, okay. And Ant-Man, as he's falling, sees a little shadow of Wasp, the real Wasp, Jan- Janet Van Dyme, as he's doing shrinking, you know, Hank Pym's wife. And he shrinks, and then he does this thing where he's like, wait, I can actually do whatever I want because I'm Ant-Man. And he then grows. Well, yeah, they said not to... Me- he has one of them growing... Uh, star things, circles on us, regulators. Uh-huh. And he's like, I'm stuck here for eternity anyway. Might as well try this in the regulator. Pops it in there, becomes big again. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you know he's like, uh, his daughter's like all happy and such, and he makes a an escape, very elusively, very elusively. And then uh, he has dinner with his family. And Michael Douglas is like, there's hope to bring back my wife, Hope, as he's talking to his daughter, Hope. Yeah, and uh, Scott's like, now, can Scott not actually remember this, or is he just kind of gaslighting Hank Pym here, that he can't remember how he became big again? I think he really just doesn't remember. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe we'll find out later. Who knows? Who knows? But then he goes and he rises up Wasp. <laughs> He's like, I can't believe you would kiss me when uh, Hank Pym Oh, that's right. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> and Hank's like, you're full of shit, Scott. And he goes, oh, yeah. I love their relationship. Yeah. Paul Rudd's just like, in general, a hilarious actor. Oh, yeah. And I'd be kind of interested, and maybe this is a fun fact you said here, to figure out like how much of those lines he, his lines were like improvised, kind of. Oh, probably a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, because he does that in a lot of his movies. Yeah, he's just very charismatic too as Ant-Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, perfect casting for Ant-Man. Honestly, yeah. Um, Now, Jake, what happens after the credits start to roll? Well, I'm glad you asked, because a couple minutes into the credits, it's Hope and Hank Pym in a basement, and he opens up the secret door um, that he crafted with Minecraft Redstone. Not Minecraft and, Redstone. <laughs> and what do we see? But the wasp suit. I think that might be the yellow jacket suit. That's the yellow jacket suit, you're right. <laughs> no, it's the wasp suit. The wasp suit. He's like, me and your mother started working on this, but we built it for you. You could be our, our- little wasp baby. You're the wasp lady now. Um, and then credits keep rolling, and then what? Oh, I'm s- glad you asked for oh, a wait. second time. Hold on, before we get to that part, we forgot to talk about the very end of the movie where Michael Pena's like, hey, so I heard from this person who heard from this person who heard from this person that heard that the Falcon is looking for you. Yeah, uh, and is that when, like, uh, they're, like, recruiting him to be an Avenger, kind of? Falcon is looking for him, so, so cut to the end credit scene, and what's going on there? Well, Bucky is in rough shape. Uh-huh. Um, looks like he's been on a three-week bender and is hungover. Kind of honestly not incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steve Rogers, Captain America, is there with Falcon Anthony Mackie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but I know a guy. And that's uh-huh. what you're seeing at the end of the movie earlier is him trying to get in touch with Ant-Man. So does that scene happen before the movie kind of ends yes i would think so yeah because honestly civil war doesn't take that long that doesn't take place that long after uh ant-man so the divide is starting to form between 
the Avengers kind of. Right. So the the end of Ant Man, like that very last scene, takes place around the same time. But the whole rest of the movie takes place about like two months before. Makes sense. But yeah, that is uh, that is the movie Ant Man. Honestly, I like that movie. Yeah, um, I, I love Ant Man. I've seen it before, but I really haven't watched it. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense knowing how you consume movies. Yeah, it usually takes me a good four or five watches to consume a movie. But, um, and I think when I saw it before, I don't think I watched, like, saw the whole movie. Like, I popped into a room and it was on the TV, so I finished the movie at, like, the train scene. Yeah, that's fair. I was probably the one watching it. I think you were, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that was back in 2015, perhaps. Probably when this movie first came out on DVD. Yeah, yeah. But overall, I think it's one of my more favorite Marvel movies. Um, I probably put it in my top five. Okay. Okay. Well, I will give you an A for so far. So for far. liking the movie, but I'll give you a C for how well it's... you did telling the story. And now it's time for some funny facts. Ooh. They're actually not that funny. They're still just kind of fun. Well, read me some fun facts here, and uh, I'll be interested. In the comics. Mitchell Carson, the Hydra agent, was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who was supposed to get the suit of Ant-Man originally before turning to the dark side. So did Howard Pym kind of like know this guy was bad or Hank Pym? So in the comics, like Hank Pym is Ant-Man, like the original Ant-Man with the Avengers for a while. Um, and when he's like going to hand down the suit to the or when the suit's getting handed down to the next person because uh, some crazy shit happens with Hank Pym in the comic books. Uh, Hank Pym becomes... <laughs> in the comic books, the original Yellow Jacket was Hank Pym. Really? Yeah. That's, uh, he may have smacked... In a very controversial comic, he may or may not have smacked his wife. And then they retconned it and said that he had been his mind had been taken over. Seems like it might have been the 60s. I think it was the 70s. Um, but it, apparently it was a miscommunication between the writer and the art, the artist. <laughs> what a miscommunication. Um, he's like, hey, why am I smacking my wife in this comic? And he's like, I thought that's what you wanted. It, it happens, you know, <laughs> mistakes happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess they kind of do allude to that a little in the movie because um, hopes like your brain's been taken over by the. Pim particles. Yeah, that's basically what they said in the comics happened. <laughs> Your brain's been taken over by the Pim particles. Smack! So when Cross is talking about the old Ant Man, he says those were just tales to astonish. A nod to the comic book run of the same name that Ant Man first debuted in. Okay. Tales Make to astonish. Tales to astonish. I was astonished after <laughs> hearing those tales. Yellow Jacket's blaster noise is pulled from Star Wars' ATAT blasters, so it's the same noise. Oh, it's on same uh, it's kind of like the same like laser too yeah yeah this is like right when disney had the rights to star wars and marvel oh, so they're like throw it in there pretty much <laughs> um the ripple lines showed when scott shrinks was based off the way shrinking is depicted in the comics with just a bunch of tiny little silhouettes being drawn within each other oh yeah it's just like <laughs> Yeah, like he has those like little shadows of himself when he's shrinking. They mm -hmm. that's basically like what it looks like when it's drawn in comics. I like how they kind of connect the comics. Garrett Morrison cameos as a driver because he was the first actor to depict Ant Man in live action in a 1979 SNL sketch. Who's this, Scott Morris? Yeah, so when Ant Man is like first putting on the suit and he like is falling, he falls onto a car and dents a guy's car. That's Garrett Morrison. Oh, oh, the taxi cab guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, And he was he played the first depiction of Ant-Man in live action in an SNL skit. The only other person to play Ant-Man in live action. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, um, before you read off your next fun fact here. Yes. We did forget there was a Stan Lee sighting. Oh, yes, we did. Stan Lee was sighted. Um, fuck. At the end he, of the movie. Yeah, he was one That's of the... Fun. I I know a guy who knows a guy kind of thing. Yeah, he's like, he was with this hot chick, and he's like, damn, that is a hot chick. <laughs> Man, you really uh, you really skipped to it because that was gonna actually be my next fun fact. Oh well, look at me once again knowing the information before 100%. you put it out there. 
Yeah, and I 100% that was my next fact. No no cap. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> um, When Cross starts shrinking into nothing, his arm goes first. Phase two, baby. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> I was like, I do not recall seeing an arm dismemberment in this movie. It was it was a uh, yellow jacket's arm. It shrunk Classic. first and shrunk off. Classic phase two. So there's two Star Wars uh, links in this. Oh, yeah, because Disney owns Star Wars. Yep. Um, and the Russo brothers directed the end credit scene. Makes sense. Because it's literally a clip right out of Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you know what it's time for. We got to dot these I's, cross these T's, connect these threads. It's all connected. Put the slash in the queue. We see the Triskelion in 1989, along with founders Peggy Carter and Howard Stark. Visionaries. We've seen the Triskelion in Winter Soldier, and we saw Peggy Carter and Howard Stark in Captain America, and soon to see them in the Black Widow series. Or, wow, in the... (laughs) Agent Carter series. <laughs> After getting fired, Scott walks past the poster for Pingo Doce, the fictional drink Ed Norton bled all over in The Incredible Hulk. No health, uh, no health guidelines there. He's just bleeding Hulk juices into uh, all this Pingo Doce. Pingo Doce is also what they sell at uh, Avengers Campus in Anaheim, Florida, or Anaheim, California, at Disneyland. Oh, so you can actually get it and become the Hulk. Um, only if Ed Norton puts his nosebleeds in it. Yeah, that batch has probably been filtered out by now. <laughs> One of the members attending Cross's presentation is a Ten Rings agent. We can see his Ten Rings tattoo. Hmm, Ten Rings, you say? I have a feeling we might learn more about those later. And we've also talked a little bit about the Ten Rings. Yes, in the Iron Man. Yeah. Episode. Maybe, maybe soon there'll be some more Ten Rings. Interesting. The newspaper Scout runs across says, who's to blame for Sokovia? I personally like to blame the bad guy, but I could see how they blame Iron Man. Well, Iron Man created the bad guy. Sure. Like, if Facebook were to take over the world, would you blame Facebook or would you blame Mark Zuckerberg? That's a good question. I see your point of view differently now. (laughs) Uh, Hank and Scott reference the Avengers in the events of Sokovia. Mm Mm-hmm. Scott accidentally goes to Avengers Campus. Whoopsies! Made a big ol' oopsies. Um, Didn't know it was the Avengers Campus, but... um, On the grounds, you can see the Bifrost markings Thor left behind at the end of Age of Ultron. They're a little damper, but they're still there. Oh, on the Avengers Campus. Yeah. Okay. Remember at the end of the movie when he goes away to go look for the stones? Couple months, grass takes time to grow back. Yeah, that mark is still there. (laughs) Scott unsuccessfully tries to riz Falcon. Yeah, I would say it was a unsuccessful rizzing. <laughs> but hey, was it though? Because Falcon does come back looking for him. That is true. But also Scott goes, hi, I'm Scott. <laughs> and Hope just goes, did he just go, hi, I'm Scott? <laughs> <laughs> he planted a riz seed. Uh, the person Falcon is radioing it to is Natasha. Black Widow. When Scott goes subatonic, there is a shadow of the Wasp in the Quantum Realm. Yep, we talked about that. During Luis's story, we find out Falcon's looking for Ant-Man. He can, he also contacts a woman who references Spider-Man by saying she has a guy who jumps, a guy who swings, and a guy who crawls all over walls. Oh, so those were all the same guy she's referencing. That's what the theory is. The theory is that she, like, this was right before Marvel had the rights to use Spider-Man. So people were guessing this was their, like, first reference to Spider-Man. Yeah, now they have an Ant-Man and a Spider-Man. Thank you, Spider-Man! Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Uh, do do do. Falcon tells Cap he knows a guy who turns out to be Ant-Man. There's a lot of knowing guys. And Hank shows Hope a prototype wasp costume. I thought it was the yellow jacket. You're an idiot. <laughs> All right, that's it for my connection. So you know what that means, Jacoby? Oh, I do believe it is quiz time, my good sir. I was so mad because I thought about a good idea for last week's quiz would have been to have AI create you a quiz since we were talking about Ultron. But I thought about it literally earlier today. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, But here's a quiz that I created with my own two hands. <laughs> no brain used. 
No brain at all. Question number one. Where does Hank confront Howard Stark and Peggy Carter? Is it A, Pym Tech, B, Stark Enterprises, C, the Triskelion, or D, the Raft? I do... Did you throw the raft in there? What do you mean? That's one of what is of course I threw it in there. It's an answer. <laughs> what are you I don't understand what you're asking. The raft from remember when I mentioned the raft during the telling of the story? No. When he broke into oh. Pim, Hank Pim's house? Oh no, the raft is a place in the MCU that might be one of the places that Hank confronted Howard and Peggy Carter. Well, it's not that place because it was in fact the Triskelion. That is correct. The raft is the big uh, super prison where they keep all the super powered bad guys. I thought you just threw the raft in there because I brought it up earlier. No, it was one of the answers that I already had in there. <laughs> Got you. Question number two. Who is the current CEO of Pym Tech? Is it A. Hope Van Dyme, B. Darren Cross, C. Hake Pym, or D. Scott Lang? Now, is this current as of 2023 or current as of 2015? Current as of 2015. That would be Darren Cross. That is correct. Damn you. I thought that one would throw you for a loopy. <laughs> Hold on, I'm changing this next question. Oh, you can't do that. Yes, I can. This is cheating. I'm not changing the question. I'm just changing the, the answers. Oh, boy. All right. Who directed the film? Was it A, Peyton Reed, B, Peyton Wright, C, Peyton Jones, or D, Peyton Thomas? Peyton Reed. What? <laughs> I said Peyton Harris at the beginning. I know. I couldn't remember which one you said, so I just made a bunch of Peyton with random last names. <laughs> They're I'm trying to throw you off. Um, question number four. What was Antony's original designation number? 247. God damn you. <laughs> I can't believe you got that one. Uh, question number five. What powers Ant Man suit? Is it A, Pym Tech, B, Pym Reactor, C, Pym Particle, or D, Pym Juice? Ooh. Pym. Pym Tech? That is incorrect. The answer was C, Pym Particle. Ah, I knew it. I thought Pym no. Tech might throw you off there. Yeah, that was a tricky one. <laughs> tricky little troglodyte. Troglodyte? Yeah. Interesting. Question number six. Where does most of Ant-Man take place? Is it A, San Diego? B, New York? C, Chicago, or D, San Francisco? San Francisco. That is correct. You looked a little befuddled there. Yeah, New York threw me for, uh... For a loop? Yeah, because every, every superhero movie takes place in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Question number seven. What is the name of Darren Cross's alter ego? Is it A, oh. Wasp? B, oh, no. Yellow Jacket? C, Man Ant, or D, Yellow Stinger? <laughs> the hardest question to date. <laughs> Yellow Jacket. <laughs> oh, man, that's incorrect. It's the Wasp. No! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's correct. What was the fourth one? Yellow Stinger? Yeah, it was Man Ant and Yellow Stinger. <laughs> Yellow Stinger would have been a good name. Question number eight. What did Hank originally tell Hope Janet's cause of death was? Was it A, an explosion, B, a car crash, C, a plane crash, or D, drowning? It was a plane crash. That is correct. I was not sure if you would remember that one. I did. I threw it in there so that you couldn't yell at me for not throwing it in there when I was <laughs> we were retelling the story. Question number nine. Who is Falcon talking to on Adventures Campus? Is it A... Black Widow, B, Captain America, C, Vision, or D, Rhodey? Oh, it is Black Widow. That is correct. Question number 10. Who are Steve and Sam standing with at the end of the film? Is it A, Tony Stark, B, Scott Lang, C, Black Widow, 
or Steve, Bucky Barnes after a nine day bender. Bucky Barnes after a nine day bender. That is correct. I knew you'd get that one. Well, Jake, that is a 90%. I'm going to have to fail you for this class. You did not get a hundred. Oh, <laughs> only, only pass if I get a hundred. It's a pass fail. I see. I think pass fails aren't even if you get a hundred, but. Mine is, but that's okay because that's the end of the episode. So you can't be outrageous with me for long. I think that's the bell. So here's your homework for next week. It is to watch part one. And I'll tell you sometime off stream when I look it up, which episodes uh, of shield. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's one through 11, but I don't know how many are in the season. So uh, well, we'll, we'll confirm. Yeah, but I think it's one through 11. Watch that for next week. Um, this has been Marvel Cinematic University, where each and every week, Jake doesn't remember nothing. <laughs> you can follow, if you've made it this far, uh, follow us. <laughs> Did that sound too desperate? <laughs> follow us, please! Please. <laughs> eggs are seven dollars. I can't afford eggs. <laughs> Um, no, if you made it this far and you liked it, share it, follow us, uh, we're live every third, well, not live, but we've got new episodes every Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, you can follow us on our Instagrams, TikToks, and Twitters, AJ Slabs, Juicy Snake 12, and MC 101 University Pod. It is a, it is a nice mouthful. And... You weren't a whole, you weren't very confident in that 3 p.m. I'll just throw that out there. Here's the thing. Sometimes it's 3 p.m. Sometimes it's 4 p.m. Sometimes Alex forgets to hit the download button the night before. So then it's Friday at 3 p.m. Because that's as quick as I could do it because I have trivia. Um, but it's around 3 p.m. Give or take a day or two. <laughs> exactly. I was only late one day. The others have been like usually at least by five. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is Marvel Cinematic University. We'll see you next week. Get out of here, you rascally viewers. <laughs>